right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Angel Dear. And I appreciate you being here. And then before we get into all the amazing things I know we're going to talk about today, do you mind just sharing a little bit of your story? How did you get to where you are today and, and guiding the people through a lot of the things you do today? Well, that's a long story and <laughs> a roller coaster. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but let's say, you know, I think I started like many people do. I uh, went to school, I went to university, mm -hmm. I got a PhD, and then I worked for big companies and then starting my own startups. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was climbing the corporate ladder of success. Mm -hmm. I was answering to the more Western way of looking at happiness and joy by ticking all those uh, boxes. Mm -hmm. uh you know the house and the money and the wife and just you know everything <laughs> mm -hmm. and then i re started to realize by basically the state of my internal affair mm -hmm. <laughs> my well-being my emotions my mind my lifestyle too that there was a problem that somehow I was uh, in this achievement trap, that this hamster wheel and that it was going to be never enough. And I could see clearly there are many steps to that, but at some point I would see clearly you're going to end up being old and not very fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And those successes, you know, I started to realize too, that was, I think the big discovery was what's the purpose of this life? You know, I think every human being, I believe, asks that question, what's the purpose of life? Why are we alive? And I felt that what society was presenting to me did not answer uh, that question very well. Okay. And so I started seeking ancient teachings, ancient wisdom, uh, masters of different lineages, uh, Sufi, ancient Christianity, Kabbalah, Advaita Vedanta, which is Hindu. And then I ended up finding my way into the forest of the Amazon with the Shipibo tribes and doing deep, deep work with them. And then something really clicked that those people that seems to live a life that's very different than ours. I mean, it is very different than ours. Might have some really good answers or better question about life than we ever had in the western world and in fact they are applicable very much to our modern lives you know it's not about living in the forest or going back 2000 years ago it's about what are elements of wisdom there that could help us live better better with ourselves better with each other's better with the environment better with our kids you know all of it and I started doing that for myself. In fact, I did that for myself for many, many years until uh, people start asking me, hey, you, your life is amazing. I mean, I, I don't call my life that way. I love my life. Mm -hmm. But they're like, what happened to you? What did you do? Can you teach me? There are things people I can meet, things I can learn. What can I read? Mm -hmm. And you know, over the years, the past 10, 15 years now, I've been a teacher of these ancient ways and I've developed programs to help people step into the power mm -hmm. and get out of that achievement trap i mentioned get out of this way of life that is creating a lot of illnesses as you mentioned right mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i mean everything you said it just it so resonates with so many of us that we're just seeking something outside ourselves trying to figure out what do we want what is that sense of fulfillment and fearing like, feeling like we're grasping at straws and I know you said that there's just something that clicked. Can you describe that a little bit more? Because I, I know that when we're seeking something, it's like we get in our heads and we're like, is this for me? Is this not for me? How do I know? You know, and you start kind of questioning yourself. What was it for you that really made you realize this is in alignment with me and this feels right? Well, it's the way you feel when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that simple. Do I feel joy, excitement, gratitude? Mm -hmm. I'm not really excited to engage with that gift of this new day, right? Because I don't know how long I'm going to live. 
uh, do I feel like I have this deep connection with people, with land, with everything. And that makes me feel alive, not just living, alive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel that for so many years, you know, and I was a successful business person, entrepreneur in New York City many things that most people would dream of and say, well, that's going to make you fulfill and happy, but it did not. Right. And I could just feel that it was something else. And I can just feel how I'm feeling now and how I am. Right. But I meet so many people that are feeling the same, mm -hmm. you know, one, one time, um, one of the really good coach I work with is say, we were developing, you know, my offering and he's like, is there something you would like to say to your clients, but you can't tell them because that would be offensive or that would be too much, but there's one thing you would tell them. And what came up to me is that you are living a lie. Mm. The life is a lie. Mm. And I can sound really strong, right? I'm not saying everything, all of it is a lie, your kids or this and that, but there is a lie between the way you're living what you are doing in your life and what you truly want to do, mm -hmm. what your soul or your deeper self or your heart wish to do. Mm -hmm. And I meet so many people that can relate to that, but feel trapped, feel stuck mm -hmm. and spend years, you know, trying to find the way out of it with the mind, as you mentioned. And the thing is that when we're talking about purpose and life trajectory, it's more feeling in the belly. Mm -hmm. It's more in the body than in the mind. The mind is going to always question it. And, you know, our arguments is good, is this bad, right? But we're not going to find who we are by using a program that got us in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. That has been trained to teach us to be different than who we were when we were little. Mm -hmm. Like we have added all those layers into it that have got us away from our essence, our nature. And that's why we are, you know, sick in some ways. Mm -hmm. That's why we feel discomfort. That's why we experience illness. From a shamanic perspective, illnesses is the top of the iceberg. There is a root behind it that created, you know, misalignment, stuck emotions, many things that brought us to where we are. So in many ways, we have to take a descent mm -hmm. into the belly into the roots, into the soul, into the heart, away from the mind. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to brainstorm our, our, way, our life out of it, our way out of it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to storm the brain, which is already very stormy, by the way. It's interesting we use that term. No, we are going to ground. We're going to face what is there. We're going to open our heart. And then we're going to listen to what is arising. If you would have told me, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, this is who I would be. This is what I will be doing. I would have looked at you like uh, you're high or is it something wrong with you? Like you're crazy, right? I could not see it. Yeah. So I could not have taken the steps at the time with what I knew to get there because it's like, I'm telling you to go somewhere, but I don't give you a map or a GPS. Mm -hmm. And those ancient ways, those ancient wisdoms, those techniques that are sometimes very simple, uh, but that we don't use in the Western world, they are the GPS for the soul. Mm -hmm. They are the compass. They are the map. And once you got your map, you're going to find your way. But you need a different map than the one that's been taught to you very yeah. often. Right. Absolutely. And it's like, as you say that, it's like that, you know, Albert Einstein said that no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. And so we have to evolve to create a different reality for ourselves. And, you know, I love how you talk about that. It's like, you know, we, we get all this programming that we have built up over years that are keeping us in this place. And, you know, we can look back at like children and see how free and loving and, and open they are. And is it is a society that's creating this? What what is creating that basically bogged down feeling that you know we don't start out like this, but then we all seem to get to this place where we become adults and have to undo the things that have been done to get back to the place that where we started. Yeah, I mean it's a really good question. 
there are so many layers to it. I think, you know, it's not like a simple answer to that. Yeah. Uh, but there is definitely uh, a way of thinking that is uh, broken because look at the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a way of being in the world that's broken because look at the world, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's very obvious for most people I talk to. Mm -hmm. um, there is also the fact that the world is very driven by consumption and capitalism and we become product of it we are the product mm -hmm. so we are geared into productivity what are we going to produce what is going to make value from that value system perspective mm -hmm. and in that there is never talked about a uh, purpose there's rarely talk about joy and happiness or it is talk in a way that in fact is not what true joy and happiness is about mm -hmm. there's very rarely talks about meaning mm -hmm. there's rarely talk about community and belonging mm -hmm. there is a lot of things that are missing in that uh programming that we have received and indeed we are going to end up far away from who we are and if we are far from who we are supposed to be what wants to emerge there is going to be suffering you know, from the psychological level, emotional level, often physical level, and a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. We're not alive. The spirit is not, you know, kind of bright. We're just robots in a system very often. And it doesn't mean we're not all, we're always unhappy. You know, we might have things that pro give us joy. Even our job might give us joy, but we might just know that there is something deeper. Mm -hmm. I know that every woman, especially, because I work mainly with women, that experience that they're like, yeah, you're right. I'm 40 or 35 or 50 or 60. And I've experienced that in my life. There's this dream. There's this other way. And I want to go into it. I want to change. And it takes a lot of courage and commitments and discipline to do that. And I believe, you know, that's, that's was my experience that we need people that have been there, that have gone through that. We need the right teachings in order to guide us through it. But most people will not take that road. Mm -hmm. You know, people will just stay in the suffering and try little things here and there and mm -hmm. maybe listen to this podcast or mm -hmm. buy a book or things like that. But to do that change, you know, it requires some level of stamina. The gifts are infinite and immense, but sometimes the comfort of where we are at, all the agreement we have with our discomfort mm -hmm. is strong mm -hmm. yeah that sense and we are not ready to like take this leap of faith and shift into it mm -hmm. yeah it's like that but the quote it's like that unfor that familiar hell or unfamiliar heaven it's like what are you going to say in and it becomes that sense of safety because it's predictable our current situation and for someone who's maybe listening, it was like, it is that, that woman who's like maybe her forties and fifties. And it was like, is there something more? And they're, they're teetering on that. Like, do I just take this leap of faith for myself? What's somewhere they could start? Like what, what's a place that could really just start to open up their journey and maybe get that first breadcrumb to really dive into more of a place that opens up life for them. Well, I think one of the first step, and it's something a teacher taught me many, many years ago as I was going through this process, he said to me, so, you know, you will not change until life as it is become unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Unacceptable. And I thought it was a very strong <laughs> word. In fact, I got really upset by it when he told me that because I was like, no, I really want to change. And he keeps telling me that. He said, no, you still don't really want to. Yeah. You're still very attached to this personality, the old ways that you are in. And I think we need to come to that point first, where we know that point A is not where we want to be at all anymore. Like we don't want to live another day that way because the path is going to require deep, strong work and it's not easy. And if you have kind of yeah i mean it's not great but it's also good you know i don't think you're going to go through the deep change and that's okay it might take you one more year five more years 
a sudden illness, a divorce, getting fired for your job. Something might happen, like COVID, you know, pushed a lot of people into reflecting on their life. Something might happen that really going to bring you to a point like, okay, this is not my life. Mm -hmm. And then there are steps, like I mentioned, which is this descent this really starting to listen to the body instead of fighting it mm -hmm. from a holistic perspective we look at emotions and discomfort as an opportunity to listen more deeply not that there is something really wrong mm -hmm. but that something is trying to speak to us to tell us something and we are going to start inquiring into that that's why the first start is really this grounding this embodiment, this being with that. You know, and when you do that work, very often you're going to meet a lot of unresolved stuff. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not the 45-year-old woman that is afraid to change. It's a five-year-old version mm -hmm. that wanted to belong, mm -hmm. that wanted to be loved, and so kind of tamed down who she was. Very often you discover things that you thought are fear of, I don't know, money or change for your family but in fact they are anchored into older uh, trauma or experience of light that were unpleasant that told you to be a good girl mm -hmm. to not be loud to not step up into what you believe in order to stay connected in order to belong you know as human beings the the greatest desire we have is to belong mm -hmm and to be longed for by a community. So we want to be belonging there and we want that community to really long for, for us. We want those deep connections. Yeah. And we will very often sabotage ourselves or tame down ourselves or wear a mask in order to achieve that mm -hmm. at great cost. Mm -hmm. At great cost. On the long term, it has massive cost on so many aspects of our life. And when you wear a mask for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, it's very hard to remove. In fact, it's very hard to see what is the mask and what is you. Yeah. You might not even see that you're wearing a mask. You might think that, no, no, this is who I am. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have clients that say, no, no, this is really who I am. I say, okay, let's inquire into it. Yeah. Let's be curious, right? Let's open to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is first, I think that's one of the most important steps because once you turn inwards, once you start opening to that, you start to listen to other voices than just your mind, than mm -hmm. just the outer world. You start to listen to inner voices mm -hmm. and then the hard voices start to open. Yeah. And then something that, you know, I don't like to speak hoo-hoo too much, you know, <laughs> but some of my clients are, and I can be too, you know, speaking that. But I think what really happened is that there is this essence, what we call spirit, what we call soul, what we call, I don't know, who we are really deep down that arise because someone, as mean me, when I do that work, is interested about that and say, you know what, I'm going to start listening. And naturally, we become it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a little bit like the acorn from an oak tree that has been planted in the wrong place and it's not growing well. There's nothing wrong with the acorn. Mm -hmm. What's wrong is the soil. What's wrong is the environment. What's wrong is probably with the acorn. If the acorn believes it's a rose tree, it's going, it's going to be really not like what he sees in the mirror every morning. Yeah. But yeah. you can't really fix an acorn. We can't fix a person. What we need is to remove the falsity, all mm -hmm. the layers that are not us. Yeah. And that's such uh, an empowering process because it's not about me telling you what you are. It's mm -hmm. about me giving you tools to unlayer that and discover it for yourself. And I don't think people are taught very often in the Western world to discover themselves that way. Mm -hmm. to be self-empowered and there is something really liberating when you do that process and that's usually what gives you the stamina the discipline the courage mm -hmm. to invest resources into that 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you're completely right. Yeah. With that, I mean, we, to listen to your own voice, it's like, there's so many messages that somebody knows you better than you know yourself or someone who has the authority outside yourself. And it's very easy to conform to that because it's, especially if you've been brought up in this society, it is very easy to say like, oh, I'm sick. I need to do X, Y, and Z because that's what someone's telling me to do instead of being like, I'm sick. Okay. Like, how do I listen to my body? How do I allow myself to heal and really tune into that? And one other thing you talked about was the emotions when you're in some of these emotional states, listening to that and trying to understand that rather than thinking there's something wrong with you. And I think that's another big place we disconnect from ourselves. You know, maybe you're grieving, maybe you're depressed or, you know, experiencing some anxiety symptoms. And, you know, instead of saying approaching it with curiosity we try to either shut it down or numb it or do things that don't allow us to dive deeper into that and unfortunately that seems to be very commonplace and Mm -hmm. in that journey you know listening to yourself there's a huge component to that trust how do you how do you start to cultivate Mm -hmm. trust within yourself when maybe you've trusted everybody else's voice over your own or everybody else's opinions or expectations over your own, over your own? How do you start to dive into trusting yourself again? Yeah, I mean, that is a one step at a time process, right? You don't just wake up with that full trust when you never had it, when you have outsourced your power to others all the time. Mm-hmm. That's what we do, right? We I don't know, so I'm going to ask this person or that nobody has told me i have wisdom infinite wisdom Mm -hmm. and in fact the reason there is discomfort in my life is because there is a fight Mm -hmm. between who i am and this wisdom it's already there if not there would be no discomfort you'd be perfectly aligned so it's already speaking to you you already know deep Mm -hmm. down you know this is not your life deep down you know you don't want to live that way right Mm -hmm. and we're not going to try to look at okay we can fix that I mean, if you break your legs, yes, go to the mm-hmm. surgeon, go to the hospital, right? There's many things where you need a specialist. You need someone that knows how to do that. Mm-hmm. But here we're talking about who you are, your essence. Don't tell me there is someone out there that know your essence better than you. It's not possible. It doesn't make any sense, right? Mm-hmm. You are the master of your own life. You are the one that know. And in fact, where you are at is because you mastered your life this way. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was wrong guidance. Maybe, you know, you didn't know. But so when it comes to the self and finding that it's like, okay, I've made all those decisions that were not based on true wisdom Mm -hmm. that got me where I am Mm -hmm. based on other people's opinion and my family and whatever. Do I want you to continue that way? What are every single tradition in the world western and eastern christianity kabbalah hinduism native americans what are they telling us that is about the soul the essence and to go about it they all tell you to go inwards Mm -hmm. there's a reason monks are in monasteries in places where they have no contact in order to be in contact with God Mm -hmm. and that silence. There's a reason people go in silent retreats. There's a reason um, Jewish people do the Sabbath once a week, disconnect, Mm -hmm. you know, which I think everybody should do it, by the way, (laughs) take a day off devices and all Mm -hmm. that. There's a reason there is Vipassana retreat in the Eastern world and there's a reason Native Americans goes on vision quest alone for five days in nature. It's literally everywhere. It has different names, different practices, right? But it shows us that when we get science, once we go in, we get answers, a different quality of answers. Once you start getting that, maybe you get a little piece of it mm-hmm. and you apply it to your life and you see how you are feeling, you build trust in yourself. Mm-hmm. Because I could tell you for six hours about all the techniques and all of that and what you should do until you have an experience of it. And oh, do I have... do it. Yeah. yeah. And oh, then you're yeah. like, wow, I did this. Mm-hmm. This is what happened. Mm-hmm. And you know what? That sounds like a crazy idea, but it feels so right. 
-hmm. that's often what my client says you know what I have this vision it sounds really crazy but I don't know it feels like home like it mm -hmm. feels like in my gut you know so that's how you build this inner trust you you learning to start listening to another place in you that in fact has been telling you for 20 years your gut feeling this is wrong <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. like it was not there it's just that you were not taught how to listen to it Mm -hmm. You didn't trust that part of you speaking and see where it got you. Yeah. And the other, you know, tradition, people's things that can help you in order to connect to that and reclaim, reclaim your power, mm -hmm. reclaim really your health, your mental health, your spiritual health, your physical health in a way that is beyond your wildest dream very often. I mean, sometimes I see clients two years later and they're like, I don't know, they quit their job and they wrote a book and they are published mm -hmm. others and are doing public engagements. And, and those people could not even answer a question two years before. When we, before mm -hmm. we started working together, they were so shy and they were afraid of their voice. And here they are, right? Mm -hmm. So I know it's there in everyone. You know, I, I never go to someone and say, oh, you're broken. I'm so sorry for you. And say, no, you're a powerful being. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. You don't know how to access it. Mm -hmm. And the good news is, there is a way to do that. Mm -hmm. The bad news is you've been doing something else for a very long time. So that's going to take some steps to kind of unbuild uh, what you've built around your heart, mm -hmm. around your soul, around your essence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And just like the, you know, I, even my own experience, because I was someone who very much lacked trust within myself. And it has been that experience. And it almost was like an inner knowing, like you, you just know something deep inside of you that there there's a different path. And then it's like, you open up one door and you're like, oh yeah, this is, feels right. And yeah, it's like, so I love how you share that because that's been my experience too. Just like taking the next step I and mean, you may, might mm -hmm. not know the whole destination, but it's that next step and just trusting that you're being led by something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. so I, I absolutely love that. And it goes so far beyond, you know, many things that you often see are like, here's 20 ways to trust yourself. And it seems like such a quick thing, but it is really just that, you know, that's just, that's not it. You know, it is what you, as you describe, it is that life experience, leaning into yourself, quieting the mind, disconnecting and, and realizing that you have the power within yourself. And I just, I love that message. And yeah, and it's not the, I think what you mentioned here is really important because it's not the how, right? There's a zillion books on self-help. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, you know, tons of workshops. There's, you know, plenty of podcasts and they're good, right? They're good information. And there are a lot about the how. For me, at least in my process was the who. Mm -hmm. Who has done that? Who has a proven method? Mm -hmm. Who has a life experience doing that? So who can guide me into that? Mm -hmm. The how they are going to come into it, right? Mm -hmm. But I was more interested to say, okay, who has done that? And clearly in the place I was living, there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. So I had to go find it. You know, I spent years, you know, finding the who's and learning from them. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's really important. We often make the mistakes like, okay, I'll, so I'm going to take a class on this and I'm going to start yoga and I'm going to do meditation. And mm -hmm. Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, I have clients sometimes that, they've been meditating for 40 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't do meditation, right? Because that's a great tool yeah. and that's powerful. But the problem is that you need a roadmap. Mm -hmm. You need some someone that can guide you into it. Mm -hmm. So who do you trust? Mm -hmm. you know, and if you keep trusting, if the who is your family, but they're not happy, if the who is your boss, but is not you and it's not your life that the life that you want is this the who you want to listen to in order to become who you really wish to be mm -hmm. yeah i love that it's like I, there's another quote it's like if you want to go somewhere in life ask the people who are coming back because they forged that path already they know they know what it is um I love it because the quickest, quickest way to expedite your life is to guide you'd be guided by someone who's already gone through that and and mirror that journey very much. I mean, I have, you know, three teachers. I've worked with coach my whole life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what I've achieved today. I'm yeah. still getting coached literally every day. Yeah. I connect to my coach every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because 
my biggest passion is to discover who I am, mm -hmm. to keep discovering. It's infinite to keep, mm -hmm. to keep growing. Right. And so yeah. I'm committing to that. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think if I didn't do that, if I just, yeah, read the books, I don't think I'd be where I am. Mm -hmm. it's because i had some sometimes someone telling me you know things i didn't want to hear that's true that i didn't like you know my first coach yeah. one time i didn't talk to him for three months i was so upset by what he told me because he was not here for me to love him he was here okay. to kick my ass he was here to make me step out of who i was and i need to hear things that i didn't want to hear mm -hmm. and you know i was not ready for it at the time and then i came back to him and i said thank you you know but yeah sometime it's going to be difficult to be confronted mm -hmm. with a clear clean mirror mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you need that perspective to see see that within yourself yes yeah, many times yeah yep and i love how you share is like that there is discomfort in this this doesn't mean that even because it brings you to a better place and brings you more joy there's dis discomfort in the path if that there's no discomfort you're not doing the work mm -hmm. it means Just you're in your comfort zone there's no growth mm -hmm. We exactly. want to go to the edge and beyond. This is going to mm -hmm. be uncomfortable and scary and potentially difficult, but extraordinary at the same time. That's mm -hmm. for me a sign that you're struggling with a practice and something is hitting back, meaning we're on the edge. Mm -hmm. Meaning we are pushing the growth. You know, right. we're expanding your capacity to be with the unknown. Yeah. And that's really what it is about. It's like discovering this unknown, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. And I want to go back because you know, you're talking about nature and the healing qualities of nature and can you talk about that a little bit more like what is, can nature provide someone who maybe is feeling very disconnected from themselves or is struggling with some health impacts how can they really tune into nature and really allow nature to give them those natural healing properties yes that's uh that's something that's prevent, present in all the ancient teachings native teachings around the world uh the idea is that nature lives in alignment with itself mm -hmm. each part of it you will not find one tree in the forest that question its purpose mm -hmm. that doesn't know who he is or she is or it is mm -hmm. you will not find a river that does that you will not find an insect that does that you will not find a flower that does that you will not find the stars or a sky that do that so there are a set of laws and instructions in nature to guide life mm -hmm. for abundance, for development, for prosperity, for relation and connection. It's, it's embedded in the way nature is. And when you disrupt the place, when you cut a forest, when you, nature is going to start taking over. And if we don't touch it for a century, it's going to come back to what it was. It remembers itself. Mm -hmm. It comes back. It doesn't like, oh, I'm too broken. Mm -hmm. I give up. No, nature doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is death in nature, there is illness in nature, but overall the system is designed for that fostering of life and growth and expansion. So when we have disconnected from that because of our lifestyle, because of our culture, because of what we believe in our stories, and you reconnect yourself to it, you're putting yourself in the presence of teachers so it's not just i'm going to sit in nature because it feels really good and i can relax because nature is relaxed mm -hmm. so you're going to expand that just by the vibration around and i'm sure everybody expands that in a forest on a beach in a mountain near a stream there's something that is happening right beyond the mind mm -hmm. but it's also because everywhere you can look at you can find those teachings that you're looking for Mm. like how come this little tiny insect knows its purpose its life and go about it without ever going to school without mm -hmm. ever reading a book mm -hmm. and i don't <laughs> so i'm so yeah. confused and lost. i remember as a child being really interested by that mm -hmm. i was fascinated by ants it's a story i've shared a few times but i was a bit looking at them and said like they're so organized Mm -hmm. They just understand. And now I'm a beekeeper out of many things I do. And I find the same fascination with the bees. So that's the first surface, right? You're going to go into contact with it. It's going to reflect back to you some kind of energy, some kind of teachings. 
But then there's a second layer, which is to inquire into it, to ask questions. And that for a lot of Western people start to be a little bit hard there. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? (laughs) But there is this possibility to communicate. Mm -hmm. Not in a conversation that looks like maybe our conversation at the beginning. It might look Mm -hmm. a bit different, but at some point could be like that. It's very much like learning a new language, right? If I go to China tomorrow, I don't speak Mandarin or Cantonese or any of the language in China. I, I'm not going to understand anything. Mm-hmm. I might even say, well, they don't speak. It's just noise. Mm-hmm. So very often people go, when we do this practice, they're like, they don't really speak or I don't hear anything or, mm-hmm. yeah, because they're speaking a different way. So we have to learn a new language and that takes a bit of time. Mm-hmm. But it works with languages. If you don't know any language and you immerse yourself in that culture without translation, within six months, you're going to be fluent in that language. Mm -hmm. Without nobody translating anything, just by living with people, listening to TV, you know. I When I went to Peru the first time, I didn't speak Spanish, but now I've been going for so long and so often I can speak Spanish, but I never took a Mm -hmm. lesson in Spanish. Yeah. Just by immersing myself. And in nature, it's the same. By immersing yourself with deeper connection and certain practices and ways to do it, at some point, there's an intelligence in you that emerge that's going to reflect back and communicate with that. Mm -hmm. And if I'm listening to a teacher that is wise, which I believe those teachers in nature are, Mm -hmm. then I'm going to get some wisdom for myself. And I know it sounds very strange for most Western mind that a tree could have wisdom for a human being or a river. But I would be surprised that the people that say that never experience a vision or a stream of insight as they walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. Never had an idea that they never had before. Never thought about something they never thought about before when they were in nature. Mm-hmm. that's how it can look like yeah but when your mind comes to rest when you are in a different kind of vibration something else arise mm-hmm. is it their voice is it my voice is it a community voice i don't always know but some quality of thought of thought of wisdom arise when we do that so it's a big part of the process not the only one but it's definitely a place where we can go meet teachers without ego without an agenda over us right they're just being Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's also the beauty of it right yeah it's just those subtleties because i know exactly you you know we're talking about that it's like those little messages that they're not screams in your face like we're kind of used to in society you know it's like glaring it's like those little messages that just kind of pop in your head and you're like oh you know and i think it is really is like in those quiet moments that you can have those but i think for so many of us, it's like, we're so bombarded by things. It's like, you can really almost miss those things Mm -hmm. because you're used to being so overstimulated and having to have it. So in your face that Mm -hmm. it can be hard to like conceptualize that when you're used to those overstimulating environments. Yeah. We live in a very loud world, Mm -hmm. you know, screen are loud. The world is loud. We're all machines and people and screens. And here we're talking about whispers. Mm-hmm. if your soul voice was more loud than your brain you would have heard it by now you would have made the yeah. right decision but those voices are a bit more settled mm-hmm. they're a little whisper it yeah. doesn't mean they know less in fact they probably know more they're not shouting so yeah there is often a need to to fine tune or tune ourselves mm-hmm. to listening to a different level of noise a different level of information a whisper instead of a loud scream yeah 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 I love that and so I want to just like go into one more thing because you've mentioned a few times and it's something I think for society now is something that's not as common and that's that sense of community and Mm -hmm. feeling like you know you're mentioning belonging and I in today's society it feels very much like we're all on our own we're on an island we're feeling this sense of scarcity we're competing against each other for everything we're lacking trust in other people we're lacking maybe communication that's helpful and can you talk about community and how that plays a huge role in our healing our connection our evolution of ourselves Mm. 
Yes, I mean, we have evolved over tens of thousands of years through community living. Mm -hmm. Like literally being born in a place, living in a whole place our whole life and dying there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much how human beings evolved. I mean, some were migrating and moving, but the group of people that we were with, we were born with, we will die, will die with, right? The same families, the same groups. So that was also what gave us safety mm -hmm. against the natural world, the wild world, against you know invaders and other things. So there's a deep connection with belonging and safety. Mm -hmm. In fact, leaving your tribe, you know, you're talking 50,000 years ago, would have been a death sentence. Mm -hmm. There was big animals out there. You would die without mm -hmm. your tribe, right? And that's been how our brain evolved, how we evolve over time. Mm -hmm. You add to this layer the fact that we are interconnected to the whole, that we can feel emotions. I'm sure all of you, you can come into a room and talk to someone or even not talk to them and just feel what's going on. Mm -hmm. Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they afraid? Are they kind? You know, without any word. So we're interconnected, we're looking for belonging, and that's hardwired. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what you learn, it's there. Mm -hmm. So we are always going to look for that. So now we've severed the connection to community. We don't grow up really like our ancestors did. We lost not just connection to the land we were living on for most of us, but we also lost connection to traditions, maybe even to the food. You know, I do a lot of ancestral work with people and say, what did your great grandmother cook? Cook that. Reconnect mm -hmm. to your food. Right. So we are grieving a loss that we don't know. Mm -hmm. We're grieving something that we've lost, but that we've never known in this life. Mm -hmm. But it's there. And we are living now in a new world, a modern world, as we call it, which doesn't work for us in some ways that we are kind of aware that it works for some but even if it worked for me it doesn't really fully work i don't experience that kind of feeling of relaxation and joy and all of that so we are orphans in between those two worlds mm -hmm. we're trying to find communities and belonging in a world that doesn't really look like what we want but that's the only one available so we just you know, try to belong there. And all the prime we talked about earlier by doing that. Mm -hmm. But what we're truly looking for is a different kind of connection to the self and to each other's. And then each other's, you can expand to the land, to nature, to, you know, the greater realms that's out there. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, why a lot of the healing and transformation traditionally has always been done in community. Mm -hmm. in groups mm -hmm. if you have grief you don't cry alone everybody comes and grieves with you it's still very present in many traditions uh, mm -hmm. religious tradition where there's grieving time mm -hmm. so we need that aspect in, in the work we do of transformation because if we are alone and that's why I said who not how mm -hmm. <laughs> if you are alone that's very difficult to do that because mm -hmm. we're not wired for it it's just not human. Mm -hmm. It's not kind. It's hardly possible. A lot of the healing in our world that we're looking for is going to happen when we all come to the table together. Mm -hmm. I guess it's how it has to be. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do that, we might not be able to really fix the mess we're in, right? We will have to in some ways. And you will find that in all of you know healing circles and more holistic ways now that includes more and more group therapy or groups healings and that's what aa is doing that's what many you know many uh modern i would say healing modalities are doing that in some ways right mm -hmm. um but there's still a long way to go in order to really reclaim that and if you don't feel that if you don't have that and you feel very alone and lonely uh that's normal you feel that way mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with you yeah there's nothing broken with you Mm -hmm. you, you're just feeling into the essence of your being and so very often as you do this transformation work very often people don't want to do it because they're afraid of losing whatever community they have mm 
mm-hmm. by becoming someone else and that they might be alone in that. And that's usually one of the unconscious resistance into the work that we don't know. It's prefrontal cortex. It's our old fear, safety, mm-hmm. that plays like, well, if I change too much, what this part of the brain is saying, say, you're going to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you're going to be lonely. It tells you you're going to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the frontal cortex and your rational mind is like, well, I don't know because this and that is going to find a story around that. But really, there is a primal fear of being disconnected. Uh, you know, if, I mean, if you leave your your city or your tribe today in, in a city, in modern living, you're not going to be attacked by a lion, right? I mean, mm-hmm. most places in the world, right? Mm-hmm. So they are not always rational fears, mm-hmm. right? But because we have been wired that way because we evolved that way they are real Mm -hmm. Uh, they are real Mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much for sharing that because it it can be so easy to get stuck into that trap of feeling like i can do this on my own i'm fine i'll figure it out and to realize that this is how we are literally wired that we're we're meant to be supported and and guided by other people and part of that and realize that like that's Mm -hmm that's actually bolstering that healing process and not not it's not meant to be alone and yeah, that I mean, we, um, it's an individualistic society we're living in yeah. so we are going to believe anything we do even our spiritual transformation or personal transformation needs to be done alone in some ways mm-hmm. yeah we, we have this belief that yep. you know we are separated right yes absolutely so yeah and i hope for anyone who's listening to this hearing this message really maybe you take the next step to finding another community maybe or a community that can help you guide you and where you're meant to be and and help you along that journey but yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because I think that's, that's such a beautiful message of understanding that like we're meant to be around people and also that subconscious resistance that we feel because of that sense of belonging that we have and where we are now but then the evolution questioning where where we may end up and where our group is after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in my experience, as you change, community appears in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you're a different person and you pay attention to different things. And yeah, there might be a moment of aloneness and loneliness, which sometimes is necessary mm-hmm. to do really deep work. You can be connected mm-hmm. to too many people. Mm-hmm. But as you start to emerge from the cocoon as another being, mm-hmm. a different community show up. Mm-hmm. That's been my experience personally and also with so many people I work with. That I say, okay, don't worry, that will appear. Mm-hmm. But that community that looks different, you need to also shift who you are first. And as you are this new being, you will have a new community appearing, right? That's so many people that are doing this work. Mm-hmm. So many people that resonate with what we share. Mm-hmm. So you know, you're not alone, right? You may be alone where you live or in that instant. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you that in that street, someone thinks the same. Mm-hmm. And it's much closer to you than you think, right? Mm-hmm. At the supermarket, you pass by people that are experiencing the same thing. So you, you might not see it yet, but it's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's coming. Absolutely. Yeah. We're so much more connected than I think we often realize in this. We're, we're all connected through so many things and have so many paralleling experiences that it's it's undeniable. Yes. But- I want to thank you so much for being here and for someone who wanted to connect with you and how can they find you? Where can they find you? Well, they can go um, on my website uh, and I think mm-hmm. you're going to put the link uh, okay. under that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they are interested to explore uh, the program I do, the Sacred Purpose Blueprint, mm-hmm. they can go on Angel Deer. So it's Angel with two L, deer like the animal, mm-hmm. angeldeer.com slash register. Uh, there's a free webinar people can watch where I go a bit more in depth about what we talk about today. Mm-hmm. I also, you know, I have a podcast and I write a lot. I write every day. I have a book out there called The Sacred Web uh, that people can find on Amazon. So you can look for The Sacred Web, Angel Deer. Uh, yeah, just find me uh, through the web tentacles out there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'll put everything in the show notes too. So if you're listening to this, definitely check that out so you can connect with Angel. And again, thank you so much for everything you shared today. I know that someone is going to listen to this and this may have been the next step forward in their life. So thank you so much. Thank you. And again, thank you for everyone who's tuned in today and thank you for spending your precious time with us. 